four prismatic series. Um, these units can only be charged by a regulated charge source. And what that means is that if you're using a solar panel, it must have a regulator on it. So solar panel to regulator and regulates it to a 14.6 profile um, and up to 50 amps. So 50 amp maximum in, 50 amp maximum out. The great thing about these, you can see I'm running a, uh, two fridges on this at the moment and I'm going to be drawing the 95 litre and then I've got a uh, 50 litre under here as well running at the same time. And I just wanted to show you how it connects up with the Bluetooth. You would have seen a previous tutorial about the setup. Um, so I've got it connected to this battery here and it's a little bit like a fuel gauge. Hopefully you can see that. And it's telling me at the moment minus, minus 5.4 amp. That tells me that it's drawing out uh, 5 amp from the, um, from the battery to run these two fridges at the moment. One of them is probably at temperature so it's, it's not using a lot of power. So the way that that screen works there, it's basically like a fuel dial. So when you get the units firstly, you need to fully charge the unit um, and have your BMS on and they'll all calibrate. So the screen on here which is called SOC screen, the state of charge. So that'll give you a current voltage, state of charge and percentages. It'll give you the draw, the same as on your, uh, on your app. So once you've got the app here, there's a number of different parameters you can look at. You can look down to the different strings, you can look at the four series. It tells you which one's high and low. That's actually a normal part of its uh, functioning. But mainly you're going to use the top screen here. It's all locked down because it's set up for parameters specific for the battery. Um, don't try and change the parameters that are set. They are set for a reason. Um, and the best to leave it alone. Otherwise, we have to reset from the factory perspective. So that's telling me it's minus 5. So it's 5 amp coming out. If I was to turn the AC DC charger on now, that's a 10 amp charger. And if I turn that on, and it starts to charge. I know that that actually is putting in about five or so plus. There we go. It's charging at 6.5 amp. So that's telling me the 6.5 amp going in. That doesn't mean these aren't drawing out. That means there's more going in than going out. If, for example, there's a light on there or a set of lights pulling two amp, and the charge was only charging at two amp, it would show zero. So the idea is it'll be one amp either way will trigger it, and that's how it works. So if it shows zero, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not charging. It can be because the same amount's going in as going out. It typically happens with solar panels, because if you've got them on, say, the roof, um, it comes up in the morning, it might only charge at a half an amp, go up to two amp, go to 10 amp, drop back to five, six, and then Bill will get confused, ring us up and say, it's not charging. It's charging. Trust me, it's just the fact that you've got the same amount going out as going in. So charging, you must have a regulated charge source. And again, with the fuel dial as well, if you leave these units uh, without using for three or four or five months or whatever, best thing is to fully charge them again, because it will be in a sleep mode, and the calibration on the SAC screen on this will be a little bit out. And that's normal uh, because of the way it functions and the way it communicates between the uh, app and the BMS, uh, which is which is every six, six hours sleeping and so on. So without getting into any of the technical uh, parts of it. So if you leave it two or three months, etc., the battery's going to hold charge, but the screen may get out of sync. All you do is fully charge it up and wait till this uh, screen stops pulsating. Um, and if it's pulsating, which it might do at the moment, Okay, so that's pulsating, which means it's charging. Once it stops pulsating, it's fully charged. So no matter what the screen says here, once that stops pulsating, it'll be fully charged. That'll be 100%. That'll be 100%. So charging them uh, by regulated charge. So you must have a DC-DC uh, from your vehicle. It must be a 14.6 and lithium uh, specific. So <clears throat> don't direct connect to your vehicle um, in any way, shape or form. You must have a DC-DC. So we do have the DC-DC with double configuration like this. Anderson double fuse, and basically this takes the um, voltage from your car between 9 and 36 volt, converts to 14.6 and stabilizes it or regulates it, and then you can plug it into the uh, the Nomad L-Series Prismatic, and that will charge perfectly. So we do have these available. Um, these are a 20 amp, and you've got them in 10 amp. They've all got the Anderson configuration. I uh, prefer that you don't use a SIGA setup, because with the SIGA setup, your vehicle is only going to be putting out 12 volt. Um, these will draw 14.6. It can put too much of a load on your uh, SIGA socket. It's okay if you've got some uh, some of the larger ones with a minimum 20 amp, uh, but to be safe, it's best to be using your Andersons for the connections. It gives you a better connection. So again, you must charge these by regulated only. Okay, under no circumstance do you charge it unreg. Never connect to the vehicle without the DC. Never connect it direct to a solar panel without a regulator. And then you've also got the uh, 10 amp AC DC charger that comes with the unit. So that's basically charging the unit. How to charge? It's very simple. Uh, make sure that you've got a good quality DC if you've got a vehicle and it's 50 amp or less, it's not over 50 amp. So they're not an estimation, the loads are specific, so it's 50 amp or less. So make sure that you, if you're looking at DC DC that's 50 amp, you'll find they will charge over that. Um, it will take the charge, but it'll end up uh, tripping out after say 20 or 30 seconds. 
because of the, sorry, the, the, um, the amperage is too high. So again, keep it under 50, which is heaps anyway. And again, you know, more than happy to use the wideys like this to run a couple of fridges off these because they will stay at around the 12.8, over 12.8 volt all the way through its whole cycle, which is the difference between the Prismatic or Life PO4, uh, lithium ion phosphate compared to NMC and the other cathode. So um, that's just a little bit, again, touching on charging the L-series, make sure you do it regulated charge only. All the instructions are actually on the back of the units and they're also in the boxes as well, so you really have no excuse to not follow the instructions. So uh, we'll talk again soon. We're going to do a, a tutorial shortly about uh, how you can get away with running parallel systems and also serial to step up the uh, voltage to 24 volt, or how do you connect two of these together. We'll cover that in a tutorial in a moment. Thanks.